in this session as i was saying we'll be like you know looking into what is analytics why analytics used is used in the industry and what are the different types of analytics available so what is this analytics you know so this analytics is like you know used widely uh, in the industry this term actually you know means that you are using data and you know math techniques to answer your business questions to try to understand what is the relationship between the different uh, variables in your data and then so that the business can take decisions and and right now businesses are automating the decisions based on this uh, analytics okay so this is one of the field of computer science math it and statistics it provides meaningful math patterns in your data so that you can able to uncover new knowledge based on applying all this techniques so this analytics is a use of data information and technology statistical analysis quantitative methods and computer based models okay so in in, in integration of all these things uh, as done you can call that as a analytical modeling okay so this analytics used by the managers to gain their to gain improved insight in their business operation so that they can able to make very better decisions okay it's analytics is nothing but a systematic computational analysis of data okay it is used for the discovery interpretation and communication of meaningful patterns in data so that you can apply your data patterns in effective decision making okay it can be like you know valuable in different areas in uh, of business like hr marketing uh, research and development and and trying to identify okay which product is going to sell more and when i have to sell a product and in many other areas okay so this uh, there is a lot of confusion between what is analysis and analytics okay so analysis is focused on understanding the past what happened and why it happened whereas analytics focus on why it happened and what will happen in the future okay so when you are like trying to do some post mortem of your data we can call it as an analysis but when you are trying to predict what's going to happen you can call that as analytics okay so this data analytics is a multidisciplinary field okay it you have uh, you have to use this co your computational skills your um uh, it skills you start and um, your business knowledge and many other skills to get to get results okay so there is like like uh, when you say analytics is just not you know uh number sometimes you have to deal with text analytics okay so in in business settings even text analytics and ai techniques is also been referred as analytics generically okay so there is lot of emerging fields in uh, which is part of analytics or like you know machine learning deep learning your neural networks predictive modeling lot many other things are available okay so when you say analytics there's lot of you know sub fields available like hr analytics or people analytics your digital analytics risk of financial analytics lot of different types of analytics available based on the business domain okay but where, where is uh, on on the theoretical basis on why analytics is done there are three other different types okay we'll be like looking into this after this okay so what are the different types of applications in analytics okay so i was saying that there is people analytics you know uh, you know risk analytics like that right so how, what actually is being done in the industry regarding this analytics so companies use analytics to manage their customer relationships for example if if a company is like trying to oh, understand how many customers will i be having in the future imagine you can just like take an example of a mail uh, service provider like airtel or uh, bsnl so if if a if lot of people are like kind of churning out of the company and then uh, if they want to find out what is the real reason why people are like leaving the service people use this analytics 
techniques to find out why customers are leaving and to retain them as well analytics has been used okay so it machine learning analytics helps the companies to understand what kind of customers will leave in the future and how to retain them okay in the financial and marketing activities yes it is done to find out whether i have to like provide loan to a customer even if, if it is a business customer or a, a retail customer like it's a home loan or a car loan can i give loan to the customers how it is done it's actually you know by the application of analytics machine learning has been used so in uh, companies like you know sp cressel and uh, you know even few indian companies are getting into this market of evaluating your credit score uh, or um, for either companies or for individuals okay so all this is done based on machine learning supply chain management actually this is very very important techniques used by uh, the new companies the newbies uh, techie companies uh, like you know flipkart amazon and swiggy i mean they actually use you know ml algorithms to find the optimized route analytic techniques to find the optimized route to deliver their packages okay in human resource planning yes it has been used actually uh, you know hr managers and the vice presidents use machine learning techniques to identify which employees going to leave the company in the next year and how i can retain them yes that has been uh, that is possible through machine learning and then for pricing decisions for price prediction so how how can i price my product how how much i can give discounts and and at what time of the year i have to give discount so all these things are done through machine learning and sport game strategies oh my god this is a very very uh, you know thriving field right now where they use uh, game theory technique techniques like min max algorithms to you know identify what kind of strategy that i can apply in my in my sport so that my team will win it can be either cricket baseball hockey whatever it is okay if if a, a, a team india is like you know it's going to have a strategy one and if what if, uh, if for example if australia is going to have strategy one and and if uh, india is also going to follow the same strategy what is going to happen and imagine there's going to be like you know 10 different strategies available for team india and team australia and we really don't know what kind of strategies this both of the teams going to use so 10 cross 10 so 100 different possibilities are available okay so so the outcome of the game can be like you know changed in a in a in any other way based on the strategies this both of these teams would pick okay so that actually this kind of uh, you know problems are like uh, solved through uh, application of uh, game theory okay so you'll be like studying all this in, in in the future classes so forget about that just understand machine learning and analytics techniques are used in sports to deal with game strategies and to be frank you can take tiktok chess all these things you know work based on these techniques okay so let's get into the types of analytics so uh, i was like mentioning about people analytics or hr analytics or risk analytics so these are the analytics types based on the application of analytics techniques in in the business so it's a domain types so when analytics been applied in the um, hr industry or hr department of a company you can call it as hr analytics and then you are trying to find out you know um, which customer is going to leave the company you can call it a customer analytics or a marketing analytics right but here based on the complexity of the uh, data that you are dealing with the complexity of the problem or uh, you know on the situations you can call that as you can call there are four different types of analytics okay the first one is descriptive analytics second one is diagnostic analytics third one is predictive analytics fourth one is prescriptive analytics okay so here i i have a uh, complexity in my x axis and added value contribution to the y axis okay so in descriptive analytics we always like try to understand what happened in the past okay like you know how many products i have sold in the last year how, how much revenue i made in the last year when you are trying to understand these things you do descriptive analytics 
So yes, it is contributing to the business, but you know, the contribution is comparatively less. So second one is diagnostic analysis. Here, the companies try to understand why I got a loss this year. It's not about only the loss. Uh, for example, I might have been grown, you know, 200% this year. So you try to understand what, what actually, you know, what are the causes which lead to the growth of the company or, or a loss of the company. So you, when you're trying to understand that uh, through analytics, you, you those techniques are called as diagnostic analytics. Third one is predictive analytics. Here, we are trying to predict what is going to happen in the future. For example, how my sales is going to do in the next five years. Okay, How many customers are going to leave my company in the next new five years or how many new customers I'm going to get in the next few years. Okay, so when you're trying to predict that kind of things, you can call it as a predictive analytics. In prescriptive analytics, so how, what kind of strategy that I should take to prevent the loss of my company in the future? For example, in predictive analytics, I'm, I'm finding out I'm going to get a loss in the next year. Okay, so in prescriptive analytics, you're trying to address the situation saying, okay, how can I prevent that loss from happening? Okay, so in particular, as you found out, I'm going to have only a 20% increase in my profit, but I want 30%. What are the strategies that I should take to get that 30%? Okay, that is prescriptive analytics. So this uh, game theory applications, win max algorithms are like used in predictive, uh, prescriptive analytics, whereas most of the machine learning algorithms are used in predictive analytics. Okay. So let uh, you know see the examples for each of this so that you'll be able to understand this more better. Okay, so when I said a descriptive analysis, actually a um, lot of BI tools are available to do this. For example, you have Power BI, Tableau, and you know a lot of other uh, traditional business intelligence tools does that. Okay, so they have the dashboards, the reporting structures, they visualize the data, and then they tell you, okay, this was your sales for the last year, this was your profit for the last month or the last week. Okay, so it, it sometimes you know, gives you a real-time indication of what is happening in your business. Okay, so it actually, you know, uh, sometimes used as a data visualization tool so uh, so that it helps the business users to interpret what is actually happening in the business and also you know so even the predictive analytics uh, you know results also been you can integrate with the bi tool and then you can you know try to use that as a visualization tool okay in diagnostic analysis as it was mentioned earlier to answer the question of why something has happened it can be a profit or it can be loss to understand why it has happened and how it has happened you do some diagnostic analysis okay here it gives some in-depth insights of what's happening in your business okay so imagine you you are a company and then you're kind of selling uh you know uh different uh types of uh products in different types of in different locations you can take ITC. So ITC is a company which has different products, which just kind of been sold throughout the country. And then imagine if one product is doing very well in one of the region, and but it is not like performing better in the other region. So you try to find out why it's happening. Okay, maybe it's because of the climatic conditions, or it it, it is because there is no the employees are not performing well in that region. It can be like anything. So when you like dig more into the data you'll really really able to find out the results of why it is happening okay so here i have a small example of like you know when you have a retailer store uh, you can like you know take any retail store like pantaloons or reliance or anything so here when you like able to some because it's like kind of available in different geographical locations when you're trying to drill down sales and profits of each of the uh, geographical locations and then find out okay why in which geographical location my profit is less and why is it happening so is the customer service in that uh, in that location is poor or uh, imagine i have a you know uh, store in in Madurai. So no offense here, but like here the people might be like, you know, uh, 
uh, have more affiliation towards traditional wear so here obviously the the sales going to be less whereas imagine a, a pantaloons are stored in mumbai so obviously the sales going to be a little higher right so, so here we we know the uh, we can just assume things but but we can try to you know associate why, why is it even happening for example you have you know stores in chennai and bangalore so but in chennai the profits are good but in bangalore the profit is not like doing good in that case there's something really really bad happening maybe the customer service is poor that's why you know uh, the uh, the sales is less or they don't have enough stocks all these things you'll be able to like find out when you're able to do some diagnostic analysis the third one is predictive analytics so here you will be using machine learning algorithms like regression your classification uh, no usually like classification is not used much for predictive analytics here regression in neural networks has been like used to find out what is going to be the, my sales or how many customers i am going to have or how many customers i am going to like lose in the next year excuse me all these things is used in uh, for predictive analytics so mostly in the companies um, the predictive analytic techniques is used in the department of marketing like most of the times okay so so this predictive analytics uh, uses bi techniques as your descriptive analytics uh, so that the business users will be able to see the results in the dashboard okay the fourth technique is prescriptive analytics this is actually you know one of the advanced techniques that uh, is being like used to figure out uh, how i can you know stop something from happening or how can i make my goals to happen how can i roll out my vision so to do all that people uh, and i mean the business uses and, and executives use prescriptive analytics so most of the times it is used to uh, allocate scarce resources so uh, they actually you know techniques like you know perk cpm and then to figure out how can i like you know implement the optimal solution first you have to identify the uh, optimal solution and then you have to implement that okay so uh, in, when you like do that such kind of things you can call that you are using prescriptive analytics in your business like for example you uh, your uh, ml algorithm says uh, that you might be you know incurring a loss of for 20 crores this year and you don't want that to happen so if you and then you dig deep into your data and find out okay, which which factor is, is leading to the loss more and how can i increase the factor and what are the things that i have to do so when you deal with that kind of things mathematically you call it as prescriptive analytics okay so most of the times this mathematical programming of and the prescriptive analytics is being used uh, for the companies who deal with perishable goods because uh, you know if they don't deal with uh, with this uh, kind of technique they might incur a very great loss for example uh, your uh, ola uh, and swiggy or your rooms airlines these kind of companies they use prescriptive analytics they rely on prescriptive analytics more to optimize their prices okay so for example uh, imagine um, we have you know ola share right so this ola share works completely based on prescriptive analytics you are able to you know get able to like you know to share a ride with with the other traveler so how is it happening because the algorithms are able to identify if uh, uh, there is a ride happening from Coimbatore, uh, Gandhipuram to uh, what is it, Sulu. So there is one more ride who is like who just want to reach from Gandhipuram to maybe uh, Sitra. So in that case, maybe we can just club the rides if both of them are okay to share. If they have booked a ride in the owner share. So the algorithms take the job of like, you know, making a march okay so most of the not most all of the uh, you know recent uh, sharing platforms 
economic sharing platforms use prescriptive analytics for their revenue maximization. So this prescriptive, prescriptive analytics helps businesses to minimize their cost and maximize their profit. So mostly they use uh, you know min-max algorithms, but CPM, you know your uh, operation research um, solutions, assignment problems, transportation problems, techniques. Okay, so there are like you know uh, four different types of analytics available, and then we we just like you know uh, discussed all these four. Okay, so uh, when you say prescriptive analytics, the complexity involved is less, so the value contribution to the business is less because it, it are just like digging the past and, and telling business what happened in the past. You cannot like you know. Um, it adds value but not much but in diagnostic you try to tell why it has happened and then in the predictive analytics you tell what's going to happen and in prescriptive analytics you tell how you can make that happen and how i can avoid something from happening so this is prescriptive analytics so in, uh, in this session, we just discussed what is analytics, how a, a analytics is applied in the real-time business, what are the four different types of business. Hope you're able to like have a very good understanding of what I've discussed so far.